Hello friends, this video on squares and square roots part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us look at a very interesting pattern with square numbers. So the first few square numbers which we have discussed so far are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 80, 100. So these are the squares of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So let us look at the interesting pattern that I'm talking about. So if you look at 1, 1 is just 1. Okay, let's move on to 4. So 4 can be written as 1 plus 3. Yes, it can be written like that. 9 can be written as 1 plus 3 plus 5. Yes, we can write it this way. How about 16? It can be written as 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7. 25 can be written as 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9. Now, do you notice any pattern by now? Well, what we see is every time as the number increases, as the value of the perfect square is increasing, we see that it is sum of odd numbers like 1 is the kind of uh, smallest odd number after that you have 3 then you have 5 then 7 then 9 so can you guess what would be uh, how can you express 36 so 36 can be written as 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11 49 can be written as 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11 plus 13 so in this fashion, we see that this is true for all the perfect squares. Now, it is not possible for us to write all the perfect squares in like this, but we have just written the first 10 perfect squares like this. So from this, we can make a generalized statement that if you are given any number and if you are asked if that number will be a perfect square or not because when we deal with small numbers it is pretty easy to tell but when we deal with larger numbers like let's say if I give you 3,36,402 will this be a perfect square or not so all these tricks would help you in for dealing with larger numbers. So from this, uh, the generalized expression, the generalized conclusion is that if a number is a perfect square, it has to be the sum of successive odd numbers starting from one. So now the bigger the number is, the bigger the sum would be like the if, if the number is in thousands, so it would be sum of some first n odd numbers. Now you might ask that okay but how do we find out the sum of first n odd numbers because what is n? n is the number of odd numbers. So as the uh, perfect square value increases the value of n also increases right that, that's what we see in this list. So when you look at this list very clearly you can see that as n increases n means how many odd numbers are there. So the value of n in this case is 1. The value of n in this case is 2 because there are two odd numbers. What is the value of n here? Here n is equal to 3. Here n is equal to 4. n is equal to 5 and so on. So we see that as the value of the perfect square increases, the value of n also increases. Okay. Now if I give you any number randomly, now it is very difficult for you to tell that how many odd numbers sum is that particular perfect square so that that's going to be really difficult so what will you do so in that key for for that purpose what we do is we see that whenever you are given some odd numbers so the sum of those first n odd numbers will always be n square will always be given by n square and what is this n square this n square is nothing but a perfect square now let's say that if we talk about this sum, so here how many odd numbers are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there are 8 odd numbers. So n is equal to 8 in this case. Therefore, what would be the value of this sum? So the sum of first 8 odd numbers will be given by n squared, that is 8 squared. And 8 squared is what? It is 64. 
So we can see 64 is equal to sum of these many odd numbers. So if we know the value of n, that is if we know how many odd numbers are present, in that case we can actually tell that the sum of those many odd numbers will be equal to which perfect square. Okay, so let us take this example. Let's see that using this, using the concept of this uh, interesting pattern, if we can determine whether a given number is a perfect square or not. So we have, we take the example of 156 here. So how can we write 156? Now 156 is not a very small number. So let's start from the beginning. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. 17, 19. So till 19 when you reach, you know that you have reached 100. So now till here it is 100, then you add 21, so it becomes 121. Then you add 23, then it becomes 144. Then you add 25, so it becomes 169. But we need 156. So if we do the sum up to here, then it is 144. If we do the sum up to here, then it is 169. But we want 156. So 156 will lie somewhere between 144 and 169. Right. So that what does this mean? This means that 156 is not a perfect square because had 156 been a perfect square, we would have got exact sum as 156, right? But in this case, we are not able to write 156 as the sum of first n odd numbers because if we take, let, let's count the number of odd numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So if we take 12 odd numbers, then the sum of 12 odd numbers is 144. If we take 13 odd numbers, then the sum of 13 odd numbers is 169. But we want 156. This means that 156 cannot be uh, expressed as the sum of first n odd numbers. Therefore, 156 is not a perfect square. So the conclusion here is, if a natural number cannot be expressed as a sum of successive odd natural numbers starting with 1, then it is not a perfect square. So let's take one more example. So here we have 169. So how can you write 169 in the similar fashion? 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 21, 23 and 25. So till 25 if you add this you get the sum exactly as 169. So how do you sum this? You really do not need to add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So you have a total of so the value of n here is 13. Therefore the sum of first 13 odd numbers sum of first 13 odd numbers will be given by n squared which is 13 squared 13 squared is 169 so this shows that 169 can be expressed as the sum of successive odd natural numbers therefore 169 is a perfect square Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.